an introduction to legacy. What is the legacy format? Legacy is a format which allows players to use cards from all Magic the Gathering sets. However, unlike the vintage format, Legacy has a rather robust ban list that includes those cards considered to be overly powerful, which includes but is not limited to cards like the Power 9. Beyond that, Legacy works like other constructed format. Constructed decks must contain a minimum of 60 cards, there is no maximum maximum deck size, and players may have up to 15 cards in a sideboard, and so forth. There's a lot I feel is actually misunderstood about Legacy. Whenever I talk to people who haven't played Legacy, the first thing they always comment on is how incredibly expensive the decks are. I also often hear people express a belief that Legacy is some kind of out-of-control powerhouse format, where most games end by turn two due to out of control power, or that all decks in Legacy have to be blue and run force of will, all of which couldn't be further from the truth. In reality, Legacy is a skill-intensive format where a player's understanding of the rich and complex card interactions and gameplay strategies is more important than whether you drew force of will in your opening hand. In fact, in comparison to my Popper introductory video, where I emphasized that format as a deck builder's delight, Legacy can be seen as a magic player's delight, meaning that this is a format where decision making and comprehension are the key. I want to talk to you about a great budget friendly way to build your first Legacy deck in a moment, but first, what is Legacy gameplay like? When players imagine a format where games only last for two turns and decks fire off with broken, out-of-control powerhouse results, they are often thinking more of vintage than of legacy, although that is not a fair depiction of either format. A great deal of legacy's banned cards are what are known as fast mana cards. Everything from the Moxes to Mana Crypt, Necropotence and Channel, to even cards such as Soul Ring and Talarian Academy are all banned because of their ability to dive, as it were, into deep pools of mana early on. Now what Legacy does have is twofold. The ability to manipulate your library with spells from Ponder to Brainstorm, as well as not just powerful counter spells, but counter spells which can be cast for free, meaning tapped or untapped lands are less of an indicator for your opponent's control than in most other formats. Due to this, yes, a very large number of Legacy decks run at least some blue to gain access to this library manipulation and counter spell magic that is so very powerful in the format. But there's still an enormous amount of decks that run no blue whatsoever from legacy lands to char belcher builds to elves and death and taxes and to the mono red deck i'll show you in just a moment how expensive is legacy i'm not gonna lie to you it's expensive for the most part most critical cards in Legacy are on the Magic Reserved list, meaning they will never be reprinted. No, they won't. And meaning that the supply dwindles while demand constantly increases. The majority of Legacy decks cost several thousand dollars. And yes, this price tag and dwindling card supply has the result of sometimes turning Legacy decks into status symbols for their owners. If you thought Commander players liked to pimp out their decks, ask for your local Legacy player to show you their decks sometime. But there's something important I want to say about this concept of cost. And that has to do with the fact that Legacy, and perhaps to a more significant extent, modern, do not ever have cards rotate out. Looking at the cost of standard constructed decks, I see an average cost of about $250. And while some are less than this, many are even higher. And these decks run a majority of cards not played in any other formats, which means that when they rotate out of standard, their prices drop like rocks because no one plays with these cards and no one wants to buy them. While some aggressive traders and sellers can keep up with rotation, for the vast majority of players, seeing each new set is just another stage of the magic game where 
chase rares, chase mythics, and sometimes even chase uncommons need to be pursued with their giant price tags. Playing standard over a period of several years can equal costs comparable to modern and possibly even legacy. And unlike modern or legacy, these cards have built-in expiration dates and fleeting financial values. However, a legacy deck that you build, and yes, a modern deck that you build, never rotates out, and over the years, the money saved compared to standard not only grows, but should you ever wish to trade out for a different deck or just sell out of the game entirely, most of your buy-in cost has not only held, but it has very likely gone up. How to get started in Legacy because of the complexity of legacy gameplay, I urge people to start small and simple. Actually, I give this advice for nearly every format, and that's to build a mono red burn deck. In legacy, as in most formats, mono red burn decks are usually the cheapest to put together and the easiest to overall pilot. They allow you to wet your toes in the format, studying the variety of decks you will go up against as you decide which ones are right for you to upgrade towards. Best of all, in legacy mono red burn, the cards you are playing with are literally the best, the greatest, the most powerful burn spells from throughout Magic's history. So if you are a red deck lover and aficionado, there is nothing more sublime than Legacy Burn. The deck currently runs three creatures. Goblin Guide, considered to be one of the greatest one-drop red creatures in the entire game. Monastery Swift Spear, a strong contender for second. And Eidolon of the Great Revel, a creature that punishes your opponent for all spells they cast at three mana or under, which is usually the vast majority of them. Yes, Eidolon punishes you too, but you'll likely win this race. If this list reminds you of Modern Burn, you're right. Like Modern Merfolk and many other competitive modern decks, Legacy Burn shares a vast majority of its cards with its modern counterpart, which means that if you already have a modern mono-red deck, or Merfolk or Death and Taxes, etc., etc., you likely already have about two-thirds or so of the Legacy counterpart. Even if you don't already have the modern equivalent of the Legacy deck you are building, another great advantage I see to these decks is that they can easily be converted into either format, letting you essentially have one deck that can be played in both formats, with a minor swapping out of cards. The deck box, for example, that I keep my own mono red deck in, has all the cards for both Legacy Burn and Modern Burn, which means whether there's a Legacy game going on at the shop, or a Modern game going on at the shop, I can sit down and play. Forever. I like that a lot. Continuing on, Legacy Burn also plays play sets of Lava Spike, Lightning Bolt, and Rift Bolt. The first Legacy power-up is also a costly one, Chain Lightning, which will currently run you $15 each. The spell is essentially another Lightning Bolt. 99% of the time, it's simply one mana to do three damage at instant speed. But luckily, of course, that means there's a lot of budget alternatives available. Now, there's many, many choices here, but my own budget recommendations for replacing Chain Lightning are either Shard Volley, or perhaps the newly printed Fiery Impulse but there's a lot of choices. Next, we get into some amazing red spells. Fire Blast and Price of Progress. Fire Blast is a great finisher or emergency card, doing four damage at instant speed for either six mana or, as it is usually cast, for zero mana, that's right, for free, out of nowhere, just by sacrificing two mountains. Non-basic lands are almost entirely run in Legacy, so Price of Progress, which does damage equal to twice the number of non-basics your opponents control, is another powerhouse. Three dual lands in play, turn three is typical. Two mana to do six damage as a result, hot. Finally, three sulfuric vortexes will put major pressure on your opponent. Again, like the Eidolon, this will hit you too, but you'll win that race most times. And it is not a spell your opponent is going to want to let resolve. Since we are in mono red, you can guess what my budget mana base is, right? That's right, 20 mountains and done. It's budget, yeah, but that means that with the chain lightning swapped out, this legacy deck costs about $250, which if you'll remember is the average price of a standard deck these days. Oh, and keep in mind that 120 
$20 of that is just for four goblin guides, which hopefully will be reprinted in Battle for Zendikar. How would you optimize the mana base for Mono Red? Answer, fetch lands. Yes, you'd just be fetching out mountains, but the filtering effect on your deck is very important. Three Arid Maces, three Bloodstained Mires, three Scalding Tarns, and three Wooded Foothills is ideal to ensure you both have the proper amount of mana, but also draw into gas when you need it. What does a sideboard look like for this deck? Well, a lot of choices, and Legacy has an incredibly shifting meta, but some examples of sideboard cards would be Searing Blaze, Smash to Smithereens, Grim Lava Mancer, which some people will even put main board if they are running those fetch lands, Vexing Shusher, which of course will help us against those counter magic decks, Relic of Progenitus, oh, and drive those blue players nuts with Pyro Blast and Red Elemental Blast. One red mana to counter Force of Will? Yes, please. I hope this video has been of some help to you, and you can help me out by remembering to like, share, subscribe, or even just by leaving a comment. And if you'd like to see me play with this and other Magic the Gathering decks, be sure to come watch me on twitch.tv at Tularian Community College. I'm going to be streaming gameplay of this deck, as well as many others, and I hope to see you there.